Hello, everybody. What is the state of chess.com? May 16th, 2017. That's what we're going to find out today. Welcome back to the Chess Today Show. I am your host, Danny Wrench, and um, let's not pretend this is a professional affair. It actually has been an overwhelmingly positive response from all of you, so thank you for the good questions and uh, making this very much a kind of a live half an hour Q&A podcast style, let's see what's going on in the chess world kind of show. And uh, I had a lot of fun with our first show, and, and so first thing we're going to do as we, as we said, every show must start. I got to make my daily chess moves. And because this official tournament on chess.com just started for my rating group, we see that I actually have eight. I have eight moves waiting for me. So let's go ahead and jump in. And uh, maybe we'll even, we'll even rock over to, the, uh, to the, full, the full screen experience here so we can actually see everything, all the games that are waiting for me. Um, all right, so let's do it. So got this game here with Mr. Joe8888. I said that right, actually. Joe8888. Not sure where he was going with that, but he went there. All right, well, uh, we have a queen's pawn game, and I'm going to play c4. Actually, am I? Or do I want to play the Verisop? I haven't had my coffee yet, so you guys are witnessing the live. Danny, at some point, becomes even more crazy than he already is kind of experience this morning. Um, many of you know that I also play the Verisop. Did you know, did you know how awesome it is now that we have this analysis feature and that you can actually save your notes to yourself? So, for example, I could enter knight c3, you know, knight f6, and talk about the Verisoft line. And now what we can do is you can actually right-click and say, you know, normally in Blitz these, these days I play the Verisoft, but choosing to go for something a little more positionally common with the regular Queen's Gambit instead and so the thing is obviously before and by the way we also have a built-in spell check so how awesome is that um wait positionally isn't a word a little more positional i guess yeah duh danny <laughs> um you can actually you can actually uh make comments and notes to yourself which you could you could do manually before if you if you if you use the notes tab but now we can save it and here's the best part of this this feature is brand new so this isn't me showing up this is actually very good chance many of you don't even know we have this so now what happens is when you go back to the game it actually lets you know that you have analysis there saved for you reminding you that you you made some notes so i play c4 and i'm going to make my move and in every one of those games when i go back to that game um if i go back to that game uh, wait, it's just going to the next ready game. Let's go back to the daily chess page against Josh88 or whatever. Um, it'll show you. Well, I guess I got to go through the games then. It's already got all my ready games going, so I'm going to keep playing. But that analysis will be there. It'll be saved for you. Pretty awesome stuff. So in this game, could he have actually played knight takes e4 is a question. I was actually calculating this in my head after I played the move h3, and I was wondering... Because if I play, okay, so if I play knight takes and he plays bishop takes g5, uh, maybe there's some sort of tactics here. Is that the issue? No, because f7 is defended, so he can just, you know, save the bishop, right? Hmm. Maybe he can't. I have f4, right? f4 is an idea, but he has g6. Something like this actually would be interesting to say the least. Um, so I was thinking about this, and when you right-click, you can actually make a comment before the move as well. So you can say, I was worried that black might have this tactic after having played 9h3. I thought about it all night. It was weird. It was weird. I should have been dreaming about other more appropriate dream stuff. But I was thinking about chess because I am a psycho. 
Yay, right? Look at that. Look at all the notes I can save for myself. I'm going to have way too much fun with this. This is going to get out of control. Um, so if I take e7, the point is he can take c3. And in all seriousness, this is an educational point for everybody because it's an inner mizzo. Right? He's, um, he's gaining a tempo on my queen. And if I take, he takes here. And if I take, I guess that's the issue. This looks like, this looks like a problem for him. Okay. In fact, now he's got he's got 99 problems, and a trapped knight is one of them on B2. So that makes me feel good. Now, honestly, in, in a position that you've played so many times, like this game here, you kind of know that tactics like that aren't there, because if they were, you would have already been punished previously. So it's not my first rodeo in the scotch, right? I've obviously played this line before. But when I'm playing daily chess, as we said, one of the reasons that my rating stinks so bad at daily chess is because I do kind of just play instantly and treat it like it's bullet while they're taking three days per move. Um, so I was wondering if there was some tactics here, and I was worried that I had blundered it. Turns out I hadn't. And so now in the position that we have currently, again, you see the analysis is saved. Super cool. Love that feature. Um, Wait till we have the ability to organize all of not only your saved analysis, but all of your games into your own databases, right? Like, like your own databases online in your account on chess.com. Hashtag coming. See, we do more than just sit here and listen to Danny joke around in chess TV shows on chess.com. We design products and features. Um, so what do I want to do? One of the things that I, I would like to do is consider where do I want the king in this game? Do I want to castle short or castle long? Now that I'm no longer worried about knight takes e4 because we've established that's not a threat, it feels like a very flexible move to play here would be a move like queen e2. Right, This move would, would prepare the option to castle long and castle short, leaving my options open. Um, I think that there's a very good chance I'm going to get a good space advantage here no matter where I put the king, because f4 is going to come in. Uh, but you have to anticipate he might play h6, and then you have to decide what to do with the bishop. Are you backing up the bishop? Are you ready, ready to give up the bishop here? Not really. But queen e2 is also useful in that sense because it's flexible. It threatens the move knight f5. So the more I talk about it, the more I feel confident. Queen e2 is the move here. Let's move on, everybody. You're all helping me here, by the way. You're helping me play my daily chess games. Thanks for everybody coming in. The chat is already blowing up. Um, we've got uh, Slick Slink Creator. We've got Johan Wolfgang Von Goth 7. You forgot the Wolfgang Puck there, buddy. Um, We've got uh, a yellow username that I'm not even going to try to read because, as I've said, I, I don't like the color yellow. Um, we've got RSK Asher, Simple Spartan, Sagittarius 1995, Joseph Yossi. We've got so many people in the Chess TV chat. A much more lively chat going on on Chess TV than the Twitch chat at this point. Um, anyway, we'll get to your questions. Start. Um, actually, don't ask questions until I ask for the questions, because otherwise I'm going to miss your question, and then you're going to be upset and feel like you got ignored. And I wasn't ignoring you, I was just playing my chess game. So let's keep the Q&A portion of today's show um, to yourself until, until we get going. So here we go. This is a game that's turning into quite the tough position against Mr. Mike Klein. I am worse. Um, I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. You get it. I'm I am Groot. I'm gonna play rook to b8. No, I'm not. Then he'll play bishop f4. So I have to deal with the fact that I have a weak c5 pawn. He's threatening to come rook to d1, which is not the end of the world. The biggest issue is that he's immediately threatening the move knight to b6. So establishing his threat was first and foremost, and I did that. I can voluntarily retreat the queen to either c6 or f5. Those are both sort of interesting options. Um and see where he wants to go. Moving the queen to c6, he has 95, and that looks like it causes me some harm. I don't like it, do I? I really, really don't. I really, really don't like it. Um, if queen f5, can he really get away with g4? That would seem an unnecessarily risky idea. But if he wins a pawn, a pawn is a pawn, as they say. So I've gotten myself in a bit of trouble here. I don't know what to do. If you don't have a bunch of daily chess games going on chess.com, why not? Isn't it, isn't it a lot of fun to have games? This is what I do every day to start my day. I log in and I make a daily chess move, and that's what you should do too. Start your chess today right. Wait, let, let's find a really funny cash line. Start your day right with chess today. Start your day right 
make your daily chess moves. Start your day right. Creep out a five-year-old with your eyebrow. Um, what to do here? Seriously. So if queen of five, g4, queen e6, bishop takes c5, queen e2, rook e2, I lose the pawn. No counterplay. Queen of five, g4, queen e4, 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 slon c5. I, I do not like this, huh? Ah, Trickaruski. If he takes the c5 pawn, do I have a move like rook c8 in some position? Skewering. Skewering his pieces, possibly. I should probably be analyzing this position. I mean, I should probably be saying, like, hey. I really don't like my position at this point. Also, one of the most useful things about saving your analysis is that um, the you can now the, the the review experience gets that much more educational. You can actually see what your thoughts were during the game and go back. Now, for me, it doesn't make a difference because we know that all my thoughts are a wasted stream of consciousness. But for you, you might have some interesting thoughts, and um, and want and want to review those later. All right. So, what if I play Rook B8 and he plays Rook to D1? I move the queen. If he trades, I trade. So the issue with rook to b8, that's right, he had bishop f4, gaining a discovery on my rook and e7. But then I can play rook to b7. So rook b8, let's analyze this. So if rook b8, bishop f4, rook to b7, if knight a5, I guess I just triple up. And if rook b8, rook to d1, and I move the queen. Here I could actually probably move the queen anywhere. Because the point is now if he went for some lines like this, I'm pretty sure that this kind of thing would not really, or I just was thinking this wouldn't work out for him. Because now there's no tempo on my other rook. Ah, he has b4 though, what am I thinking? Um, hmm. So if queen f5 and he plays g4, that could actually be a problem. So that means I would need to play queen to c6. Now if he goes bishop f4 in a lot of these positions, I can actually just trade and then play rook e8, I guess. Because rook to b7 would allow knight a5 for the record. So okay, interesting stuff. All right, we're spending a lot more time on chess today. I know chess today, we're spending a lot more time on chess today. There's so many puns with the show name chess today. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out, man. All right, so interesting stuff. I'm going to go rook to b8. I feel like uh, it just feels wrong, actually. Should I just voluntarily play queen to c6 first then if I'm going to? No, because then he has knight e5, so I need to kind of wait for him to to gain, to, to, to force my queen out in another way. Huh. And I have to deal with the threat of knight to b6. All right, I'm doing it. Mike is uh, Mike's a good daily chess player. He really takes his time, as you can see by his rating. He really uses all of his time to analyze and think ahead. This is the most effort I've ever put into a daily chess game ever, and it's because of all of you watching me. Seriously, this is the most effort. Uh, although interesting that my instinct was to play Rook to B8, and after three minutes of deliberation, I played Rook to B8, so that's funny. All right, so this is a, this is a, a classical French. I play F4 here. This is still theory. One of the games that I had in a bullet brawl re recently was someone playing C5 prematurely, which allowed some tactics with Knight B5. So that's a lesson. Hopefully my opponent does that. All right, so here he plays Bishop of 3. We've talked about this being a less than ideal Nimzo Indian for, um, for White, and, and now he wants to make a trade of the light square bishops. I can't really avoid it, so why even do it? I mean, I can trade the light square bishops and still get d5. Like, there's no real positional harm, no foul there. Okay, so here we have e5, and I, um, I'm not a huge fan of, of this line, partly because I've never really made a huge effort to work out my repertoire against this. I've played against this many times. Um, it tends to be a system that is played... Uh, I mean, I think I've played games against Melikachian in this line, against Akobian. I've played some games here as, as white against this sort of weird sort of Philidor, Perk, old Indian, had a baby, and this is what, they, this is what came out, right? Um, so uh, one, of the, one of the things you're shooting for is like a flexible position where white has more space in this line. So you play moves like h3. 
you know, and then they play like c6, and then you play like a4 to prevent b5, and they go here, and you go either bishop c4 or here, and at some point they capture, um, probably not there, probably they build on the tension a little bit first, and, and at some point you get some positions like this where um, super, super solid, maybe a6 would allow a5 actually. So at some point they will they will go for some sort of capture, but maybe even with rook e8 first because they want to have the idea of bishop f8. Um, and it's just an interesting position where there's, you know, white has an edge. White has an unbiased, the computers think white is just like, you know, slightly better. But but it's solid and it's kind of irritating and you have to be patient. So I, I don't I don't enjoy playing against this line. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go for this sort of flexible approach anyway. Maybe we'll learn something together through our chess today show experience. All right, H3. Um, now we have a weird sort of. Um, it started out where I thought he was gonna play like you know, usually the main purpose is to play things like bishop f4, bishop g5, some sort of Tory or London system. But he plays H3, so I'm just gonna merrily play my bishop to b7. Merrily, by the way, I merrily did it. All right, knight f3, Rekarovka. That's how they do it. That's how they do it in Russia. And just like that, I'm, I'm out. Oh, look at that. Daily chess game's done. First portion of the show over. Let's go check on the chat and see who's here. So, first round of questions. What are the questions, everybody? Let's um, bring it in. I I'm taking a look at your questions here before we move on to the first content portion and check out some news, see what's going on. Um, yeah, 490 messages, ouch. You're looking at a man who neglects his sight presence. Part of the job is called sight presence, right? Everybody else thinks of it as like just social networking. Just log in and check your messages. And I'm like, it's stressful. There's a lot of, so I just, I tend to be like a fan of the, you know, dysfunctional family motto, right? Sweep all your problems under the rug, suppress it, tuck it into a deep, dark place. Don't ever express it. It's totally healthy. That's my motto. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So I, uh, so I do, I do neglect my site presence. In fact, if you've sent me a message in the last year, there's a chance that it's in there waiting for me. Actually, no, not that bad. I actually get about 500 messages every six months. So the last time I did a purge was about six months ago. Because I get some hate mail, I get, I get some death threats. I get, um, I get some really, really kind of grotesque stuff about threatening me, threatening my family, because I get all of those things, I'm not gonna check my messages on air because I don't want to offend you. I know what you're thinking, who would do that? There's a lot of crazy people out there. You know, we close somebody for cheating. We close somebody for abuse. Most people think I own chess.com. Most people don't realize you should be mad at Eric, right? Danny, he's just the vice president. I'm like a lowly, you know, whatever. But most people think I own chess.com. So I tend to get a lot of flack. Um, seriously, so I, I, and that's one of the reasons I don't dive in there because it's an emotional roller coaster. Sometimes you have to be ready for some hate mail, and I don't like it. All right, um, so let's see what's going on here, everybody. We got uh, we got some messages coming in. Um, looking for look for looking for something actually creative and instructive to answer because it's a Q and A portion. So here we go. Um. Nope, nobody's asking. Is this Danny's Daily Games? That's the subject. I'm confused. No, this show is called Chess Today. This show is about uh, diving into what's going on daily on chess.com for about a half an hour. We don't have very much left. At the end, we're going to feature a feature. Today, we're going to feature Vision, which is going to be a much faster feature than what we did yesterday. If you missed yesterday's show, I, I tried out a drill, and I failed to convert on an advantage of a, two miners versus a rook. Ouch. Um, cause stockfish is damn good. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, but, um, so today we're going to feature the vision tool. I'm going to try to beat my record. So stick around for that. That's happening in about 10 minutes at the end of the show. Next, I'm going to solve the daily puzzle and dive into some news. I got an idea from somebody that I should also maybe play a blitz or a bullet game. Maybe we'll play a blitz or a bullet game on every today's show. Um, has chess.com ever thought to add a matchmaking lobby for game searching so you can see who is looking for what time controls? and therefore preventing searching a time control that know, that knowing if you are going to get matched or not. It's interesting. I, I think we actually had that feature before, and um, most people just come in and click their time control and get a game pretty fast. I think that probably E-I-I-S-T-E-R, you might be searching some time controls that are less common. You might be like really into some standard chess. You want a quality game. I respect that. But usually, I mean... If you go in and just click, we found that a lot of people didn't use those tools. I mean, so what's the live chess server like now if we go in and uh, if we go in and do some searches for a game? I mean, 
I'm not going to play, but if you actually go into the seat graph, open challenges, have you ever seen the open challenges? I mean, that's kind of what you're asking for. I mean, so I went into live chess. I went into to play. I can close out of open challenges and play a friend. If I seek a game, I'm probably going to get a game real fast, and that's what most people do. But So we kind of have what you're saying. Um, obviously, you can go into open challenges and, and look for games by people. You know, we can see some people playing, and some people really like this. This is like old school ICC, right? I, I loved browsing the seat graph as a kid. I grew up on ICC. ICC was the was the best chess server around, and I and I loved it. And and I think that the seat graph was what people are used to. What you're talking about, but I don't really know that a lot of people want to search that way. They don't want to go find a three chat game from Charlie C four seventy six. They just want to go and play quickly. So, so um, interesting question. I don't know that I don't know that it's really a top priority feature. Um, what do I think the best option is against 1d4 that simply leads to an attacking clear position with clear ideas and plans? Well, okay, it's, it's a, you know, that's, um, that's a, I guess I should open an analysis board, huh? Um, you know, that's an interesting question. I guess, uh, it, 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 that it's a little bit vague because the answer is you could play anything, but I, I'm going to answer it as if you're looking for something that has attacking ideas. I think that probably the King's Indian, I mean, Knight, the King's Indian, if you can get your traditional King's Indian, is is uh, is a pretty straightforward plan. Now, you're sacrificing space, which for some people, they just really don't like that. But if you actually get your traditional King's Indian structure, there's nothing more straightforward than move the knight, drive the f-pawn, play f4, open up everything, and go for checkmate. You know, the King's Indian has some flaws, and obviously if you face some some anti-King's Indian systems, you may not always get that. But that's a little bit too vague of a question because it depends on your level and, and whatever. So, um, question from Dastardly Knight. Why don't analyze show how your opponent should best take advantage of your mistakes? They only ever show that you should have played. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking there, buddy. I mean, we... I do kind of analyze my opponent's mistakes as we go over games and stuff. Um, this is my first time on the show. Can someone please tell me what the show is about? The show is about what you're seeing right here. Live Q&A, experiencingchess.com for about a half an hour every day. Danny starts his workday. I've actually already checked all my emails, so this isn't really the start of my workday. But before we dive in to whatever the day brings, we're doing a show about checking in with chess.com. I've made my daily chess moves. Now I'm going to go solve the daily puzzle and check out some content. Um, more questions coming in, so that's good. All right, so let's go. Uh, let's go dive into the daily puzzle, shall we? Let's do that first and foremost. So, what do we got here? As we said, we know the daily puzzle gets. I saw it instantly. So at this point, we're still at the weekly stage where the answer is instantaneous for for a player of my level. But um, everyone should solve the daily puzzle every day. It's quick little buzz thoughts for your head, you know. One of the things I don't understand is why everybody's like old granddad or uncle who's got, you know, dementia or Alzheimer's, you know, creeping up. Why they don't play chess and why you don't get them on chess.com. Chess is so good for your critical thinking, you know, and that wasn't even a, that wasn't, I mean, I actually have full respect for the difficulties of those diseases. Personally, if you knew more about my life, you know, I'm not kidding. I mean, I've had family members go through that, but I wasn't making fun. I'm saying like, seriously, everybody should play chess. It's so good for you. Um, so the answer to this one, the first thing you looked up, you look up again, like it's just instinctive for a player who has experience, but you have to look at where are the, where are the, where's the king, right? So you're looking for the tempo moves, checks, captures, tempo moves. A tempo move is where you attack a piece that's more valuable. But you also have to sort of instantly notice the, the, the dynamics of the position, right? You see the bishop pinning the bishop to the king, and, and you see the queen protects it, but you immediately, whenever there's a pinned piece, like a little alarm goes off that says that's an overworked piece. A pinned piece is an overworked piece, because if you can overload it with a new task, it can't, it can't keep up, right? Because it's, it's limited, because it's pinned. So the immediate thing I look for is how to take advantage of the pinned piece. And so the first thing that pops in is, is a move that obviously does that trick, right? You bring the queen in, and of course he can't take the queen because the bishop was pinned. And immediately, even if he doesn't play bishop takes b3, you were either going to win the bishop on e6 with check, win the bishop on e7, or win the rook. Um, or even if he had played rook c6, I think queen e8 was made immediately, which is what we're going to get now. I'm going to take on c8. and Okay, this one just stops there. Um, I guess that's because we don't actually have mate. He can play queen d8, and we're just winning the exchange. But still, so a very straightforward puzzle. You have to build the muscles of immediately recognizing uh, what the overworked pieces are in your chess game. So, good fun, fun stuff there. Solve the daily puzzle. 
All right, news today. Yesterday we we looked at Mohamed Yarov's brilliancy, though today he looks like he's sleeping. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into what the latest news is. Um, somebody's analyzing their game afterwards, and uh, this one isn't as eye-catching to me as yesterday. Yesterday I was talking about Shakir Mohamed Yarov. I mean, the main headline there was he had just broken 2,800, so that was just sweet, and it was a great content to check out. Um, but as we said, we do like to check out the content every day on chess.com. It's part of part of what we do, and so interesting stuff here. Always fun when Nigel Short gets a win. Look at that. Queen to g7. Boom. Obviously, if bishop takes g7, rook b8 is mate. What did Nigel tweet today? Oh, my gosh. One doesn't need Viagra after a fin. If you don't follow Nigel on Twitter, Nigel is a great follow. Uh, he's hilarious, okay? He really is hilarious. I love Nigel. Um, he's... Uh, Maybe not the kind of guy you should ever have, like, a really close relationship with or, or like, you know, if he, uh, I don't know what his, you know, I, I don't want to get into that, but uh, let's just say rumors fly. Okay, um, here we go. We have uh, Harika Dronavali also playing here against Grandelius. So interesting stuff. I don't really see much more super fascinating stuff. What's going on with this combo? Queen to G4. Hitting the rook on c8, threatening to prepare an attack, and and what's going to go on? The knight's going to come into f4. Ooh, and the rook's going to go to d7. I see it. Is that what happened? No, he played king h3. Why? Because knight f4 right away takes rook up, queen takes e2, a check. So he plays king h3. But look at this idea that's coming. Wow. That's actually super creative because normally, okay, knight f4 was a clear threat if the queen was on b7. Do you see why? Because after takes, you have rook to d7, which is a fork of the queen and the mate on g7. So knight f4 was coming, but this idea works anyway, even without the tempo move of hitting the queen. That's how powerful the rook coming to the 7th rank is. That's some sexy stuff. That is sassy, if you ask me. Knight h5 comes in, the attack is happening, and then white goes on to win this one. Wow! That was a nice finish. Okay, so anyway, what's the headline of this? I, I don't even know what we're looking at. What is this? This is the Siegman... Grandelius, Jababa, Eliana, Blumquist, Harika, and Short. Okay, so cool stuff. Um, all right, interesting. There we go. We checked out some content, and now it is time for our feature feature and a final round of QA. Now, if anybody follows me on Twitter, first of all, I can't recommend it, but you know that I've been obsessed with our vision tool. Now, I spend most of the time solving our vision tool on the app. Um... You know, so obviously, you know, we have the app, right? And I, I, I spend most of my time, first of all, carrying around a massively oversized, obnoxious wallet phone, which, why was that a good idea that I did that? Now, like, these phones are designed to be so sleek and mobile, and all I have is like a, hello, let me get my 1980s phone out. Like, what is wrong with me, right? I mean, seriously. Anyway, that's another issue. But I go into the Vision app, and I play the Vision on the app, which is which is fun and difficult for the finger. So my record on the app, I'm doing this on the app, is 36 out of 36. Now, I don't know that I can physically move much faster. I don't play Candy Crush. Okay, I don't play a lot of app games. I'm not very fast with my fingers. And plus, my fingers are kind of fat, right? We know that I've been, I've put on some weight, right? So my fingers have gotten fat. So here's the thing. <laughs> like, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the vision tool. <sighs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to beat my record here. This is our feature feature. If you don't play the vision tool, you're missing out. So I've got my mouse ready. Now, Eric Hansen beat my record with 39 out of 39. You're going down. So first of all, you have to take away the coordinates. Okay. Um, why are the coordinates on by default? They should be, they should be hidden by default. Uh, I don't know why. They, the whole point of the vision tool is to do it with a blank board, but I don't know. So no coordinates, so it's just your knowledge of the board, okay? And uh, right now we start with um, – what are we doing? We're doing coordinates uh, from White's perspective, and, and here we go. Ready, set, go. So C7, C4. Uh, see, I, I, I can't – first of all, one of the other things I do is I'm constantly saying it out loud, which is probably also – like take, uh, I can't, I'm just not very fast. I, oh, I'm not very fast. I'm learning that I'm not very fast. And that's a thing that I need to work on. 
is being faster with the mouse. That might actually make me better at bullet as well. Whenever they get me across the board, I always lose it. Okay, so not my best work. Okay, obviously I've done better in the app even, 36 out of 36. So let's do it again. I feel like they're really making it hard on me. It's like B7, G8, B2. It's like, could you make my mouse move any more algorithm? Come on. Give me some love here. There we go. Give me a couple close together at least. So I have a chance of beating my own record. Whoa, it's like they hurt me. Yeah. mouse slip. Darn it. I'm just not very fast. It's good for your calculation though. It's a good warm-up. I recommend doing it before you go play a whole bunch of blitz. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I, I'm just not, I don't know. <laughs> I need to work on this. I mean, Eric, Eric Hansen is one of the best bullet players on the planet. So am I surprised that I'm that much slower than him? And I feel like I'm, you know. But, uh, okay, so one fun thing is, so you can also mix it up. Let's do, let's do coordinates and moves. This is also a fun one. Ready? Moves take that much longer, right? But it's also fun. Okay, so not my best. I've actually my best all time is actually twenty nine out of twenty nine with the pieces. So anyway, that's our feature feature. We like to do a little feature feature, and now let's do a final round of QA. Maybe people have some questions on calculation, how to expand your vision. Maybe we can focus on some chess questions here. So let's dive in. I'll start with the Twitch chat. Um, what's going on with uh, with the with the Twitch chat? Any any instructive questions? Any instructive questions? Danny said his fingers are fatter because he gained weight. So now I imagine him to have a three foot wide butt. <laughs> uh, thanks, buddy. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't even I don't even know what you guys are talking about. You guys are not talking about anything instructive. Not talking about anything instructive. You guys are you guys are just sitting here just, you know, patting each other on the back. All right, let's do let's do chess.com TV. I'm currently rated 1900 on standard live chess. It often makes takes me like 10 minutes to find a game. Maybe you could make something like a title Tuesday but for the top 1% of standard players and standard time control. Well, what what standard time control are you looking for? That takes you 10 minutes to find a game. I have a hard time believing that it takes 10 minutes to find a game. And I mean, I know that obviously, I don't know if anybody saw Eric's article on the, on the time control popularity, right? I mean, obviously 10 minutes is about as slow as it gets for most people. And then it gets faster. Uh, although the 15, the 15, like five time control was up there too. So if I had to guess you're, you're not, you're not searching a time control that's very popular. I mean, um, Smarter Chess wants me to talk about the new target time for tactics. Well, first of all, 
the previous target time was slightly misleading, and that was one of the issues we faced, because the target time, when you hear the word target time, what does it make you think? I should solve it in X amount of time. But the target time was actually based on the average amount of time that it takes all of our users, because the algorithms are very complex, and so sometimes it was misleading. Our goal now is to focus on a, an algorithm that is more specific to your rating. And, and so you're given a certain amount of value for the position to start like your rating and the position is rated here and so you should solve it here it's supposed to be a little more accurate to where you are not the average user rating so if you think about it I mean you, you can probably you're a smart guy can think about the holes and the, the potential holes right so the issue is how do we know the value of it based on your rating and so that's also had to be based on a previous average of what the value was said to us based on how users did X amount of rated person solved it here and these person did this so we're trying to basically accomplish the same goal, but from a little bit of the reverse thinking. And again, I don't want to get too much into the math, but obviously a lot of people have had questions about that. I think if you spend some time using it, I actually like the experience better. Um, and I'm and I'm confident that we're on the right path. And, and again, why fix it if it ain't broke? Our, our, our tactics trainer puzzles tool is probably like the most popular chess tool on the web, like of every chess site, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's used a lot. And so we didn't, you know, we know it's popular, but we wanted to make it even better and more enjoyable because one of the issues is sometimes as you reach a certain rating, the issue was um, you, you, get, you get like strings of really, really hard problems. And when it's not, when, when, when the average problem isn't something that you have like a little bit of a more you know practical expectation that you can solve it, sometimes it gets difficult. So we were trying to change the way we delivered it a little bit. And again, I'm not the smartest person in the company, okay? So I'm not really behind a lot of these algorithms. I'm sort of assessing it from my chess advice and sort of I understand enough about the math to know like, all right, well, let's do this because this would be better from how a chess coach would think about it or whatever. But... Um, you know, try it. Spend some time solving our puzzles, and again, don't don't uh, don't be too disturbed by what seems to be different right away in terms of how you rewarded points. But really dive in and see what the experience is like in terms of a balance of really difficult positions that are kind of getting you warm, positions you should be able to solve a little more quickly, and and that's kind of how I can say. So, um, is there a regular tournament time control? Why are there so many standard tournament questions today? I, it's interesting. Um, for 90 and 40 moves you can create any time control you want but okay for everybody in here who wants to play longer time controls are you in the dan heisman learning center group can one of my team members please share a link let's let's get people in in dan heisman's club so first of all the part of the reason why the dan heisman club is so awesome is because they they help coordinate they help coordinate i'm looking for the dan heisman club i think i'm a member i should be a member of dan's club Dan Heisman. Um, so the Dan Heisman Learning Center, I'm going to give you a link right here. So join the club because they, they organize tournaments and they also help pair people together. So if, if EISTR, if you're, if you're online at X amount of time, the club will tell you, oh, these people are also online at this amount of time and they'll help you get a, an opponent who's looking for a similar experience. Again, like I know to you it doesn't seem that way because your job is just to focus on yourself and that's cool. I mean, seriously, I'm not even joking. Like your job is to be like, I want to play this game. Who can play with me? But the truth is you are a very, very small percentage of user. Most people come online and they want to play Blitz. They want to play Bullet and they have like five minutes in between their shift or they, you know, they take a break while their boss isn't watching in their cubicle. That So... So people who have like three hours to spend and want to play a serious game, you are the minority of, of a chess player. And so the Dan Heisman Learning Center, I cannot recommend them enough. Again, I'm going to post it again. Join their club. If you are a seriously ambitious chess player, good for you. You're awesome. Chess.com is the place to be. And one of the best thing, most underused parts of our, of our site are the clubs. I say underused. I don't know why I say that. There's 20,000 members. So it's not underused. But there's a lot of people... Like, I have former students who ask me the same thing, and I tell them to join the club and connect with the admins in Dan Heisman's group. There may be other clubs, and I'm not trying to overly promote Dan's club. There may be other clubs that do the same thing, but I know Dan Heisman's club is a great place for this. So that's how I can answer that. Um, what's, uh, what else is going on? Quit spamming. Yeah. How do you know Danny is, is racist against Australians? <laughs> Are Australians a race? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a country. They're they're Caucasian. I mean, uh, no. I mean, I guess there's they're they're a they're a nationality, right? There there could be you know, 
black, white, Asian, you know, whatever. I mean, there could be a lot of Australians who live in Australia. So first of all, I don't think you can be racist against Australians. If you don't like my accent, I think that's a you problem, all right, personally. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to see, um, Daniel, how did you do the feature? It's a question, Daniel. I don't understand. Joseph Yossi, I understand that's a question. It's a question, Daniel. I don't understand the question. Love you, though. Um, you think the average time taken should be clearly shown without having to search for it in puzzles? I think it is. I mean... I don't know about that. I think I think uh, I thought I thought that it was clearly shown. I have to dive into it then. Danny, why do you hate Australians? I don't understand. I love Australians. This is the most ridiculous thing ever. Um, anyway, so what's going on? Uh, people want to know who the next commentator is. Well, let's let's end the show with how we normally end it, which is which is by going to the Chess TV schedule um, and uh, and bringing up the. There's the Dan Heisman Learning Center. Let's go to the Chess TV schedule and bring up the schedule so we can see what's on the plate for today. Um, and here we see, we have, uh, today we have my show, then we have the, so come back at one o'clock for the Chess Bras, who are doing a preview show. Um, and then we have Amateur Hour with me. And so the Amateur Hour is a show we're gonna be doing regularly that is, is pairing um, a chess master with a chess amateur, giving lower rated players more of a voice and more of an action to, to be involved in shows. We've done that with Alec Torelli. Today we have a new guest, which I'm really excited to welcome him on. Him on. Um, and, and so Amateur Hour is going to be giving that kind of live banter. We're getting a lot of feedback. People, people really love the shows that I've done with Hutch. He's like 1,400, and then you have an IM, right? People, people like these shows where you get more of, a, of an actual interactive coach and student banter to ask questions that maybe sometimes don't get asked when it's just a bunch of masters analyzing a bunch of masters games. So that's the idea of Amateur Hour. So that's what's on the show today. I will not be doing the show tomorrow. Tomorrow I am traveling. I got some stuff going on. So there will no, be no chess today tomorrow. And then we have another chess today on Thursday. So I'll see you then. Um, all right, we're pushing almost 45 minutes, so that's a little bit longer than I intend for this show to be. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of people still asking questions in the chat. Totally respect that. Thanks, everybody, for being here. I'll try to hang around a little bit in the Chess TV chat. Maybe I can answer some of your questions via typing while I, while I jump into to email and, and get to some other stuff here. So um, thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, please um, give us feedback. Uh, uh, today's show, we did a lot more chess. I thought we had a lot of time on daily chess and... And hopefully uh, you guys are enjoying the format. We get, get some nice QA and not a lot of instructive questions today from the Twitch chat. They just like to, uh, like to banter about what chess sites they like best. And we can only do the best we can to continue to be the best chess site on the planet and give you a lot of value and a lot of awesome stuff. So that's all we can, that's all we can do. And that's what we do here on Chess Today. And thanks, everybody, for being here. And uh, I'll see you on Thursday for Chess Today. I'll see you at 3 p.m. a little bit later for...